Well, hello my friends. Alfred Tardo, the Rebel Turner, and I'm back. I'm back with a follow-up from the last tuning I did, which was the floating this the disc base on the stand. And I'm going to do another one today, I hope. I, I hope. That's what I'm thinking of doing. Number one, my wife really likes that one and she wants another one. And so, therefore, what's a better reason? And show a different method of how to go about it that might be a little bit more interesting to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a piece and I'm going to show, hopefully, because I lost the footage on the last one, on the making of the stand and I learned something with the making of the stand was the balance point so it, something doesn't tumble over. So we'll discuss that and we'll get you on the right track if you want to make something like that. Well I found me a nice piece of wood two inches by ten and a half inches wide. So I'm going to cut a square for now and then I will draw a circle but we could do it even without being circular. We'll discuss that. <laughs> I got a nice circle. I got the center mark right over there. I'm gonna set this up. Uh, I could do this with a worm screw. It would be a perfect situation to actually put it into a worm screw. I'm actually gonna do that because it's gonna re uh, lessen one step on what I have to do as far as flipping it over and making my first ten. So I'll be able to work it all off the worm screw, make a mortise that's already part of the turning and maybe start hollowing up the inside. Then flip it up, put it on an expansion joint on that mortise which will be opened up to the inside of the piece and, uh, and be able to finish it all off a little bit easier. My drill bit is a little on the side so I'm wiggling it up. Nice and true, considering. And that will be about that size. That will be finalized once I start turning. Because either way, I'm going to go right in here. And that's about the size of my, my jaws for the expansion, expansion uh, mode.
going at 1400 RPM. Now I want to do as much as I can to the outside of this piece before I hollow it out because everything is going to be done pretty much from this side. That looks good. I do have a check mark going through this bit over here that goes down. I want to make sure I take care of that. Now the last one I did at this point before all the sanding I flipped it over and I started hollowing up the inside. This one is going to be hollowed up on the inside, but in a completely different way. And then I will open up the mouth. Maybe. It's time to go in there and start hollowing this out on the inside. And I will run this backwards in at some point, at some time. But I got to be careful. I got to be careful turning it backwards, not because of the chuck coming off, but the worm screw coming off. So I will see if that's even feasible for me to turn it backwards.
So I'm going to go in here. The base sits flat on your tool rest. And I'm going to go in there and give it a, a design going about three quarters of an inch wide. I can always resand it down if I don't like it. Speed 800 RPM. And see I got the double lines going through here but the pattern is okay so I'm going to keep that and just separate it with uh, with the V groove And again, for my V grooves, I like using my parting tool and use it just the corner of it. I'm burning it highlights it a little bit and it uh, gives you a little separation so burning it you can do it multiple ways and last time I showed it with just a little piece of wood now a piece of formica a piece of formica would even do better you burning it up I want to duplicate this on the opposite side because that's going to be the size of my plug. So it's time to go in here and do the same thing I just did, except from this side.
Back to the same speed. Even though this wood has a beautiful coloring and uh, and everybody seems to agree that uh, embellishing it enhances it some people wonder it's like if it's a beautiful wood why are you embellishing it it's beautiful in color but it doesn't have a lot of character going through it other than this little knot over here it's fairly uniform and uh, if it's fairly uniform it's always a good idea to enhance it a little bit it to the extent that you want it to be. I am just showing you what I do. If you like what I do, then uh, you know how to get it. But if you want to achieve something a little bit more glossy or a little bit of a, uh, what you would consider to be a better finish, uh, by all means. I, uh, I am perfectly perfectly happy with the dispatch. As I said, on the last piece I was trying lacquer uh, and that was because I turned it in a different orientation from this. Um, pretty much did the hollowing out with it uh, on end axis and uh, well, I, I think I still should have been able to do it this way, but I really didn't have it mounted like this, so... dark red mahogany against a nice light piece of wood in the center over here. I'll probably use ash against mahogany just looks beautiful all the time. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And that my friends is the finish that I go for. It is a nice polish finish not super gloss but it's just beautiful beautiful all the way through nice reflections no build up no streaking that's that's what else could one uh, want better than this you tell me now this part is done later on 
I am not sure what I want to do with this one. It's going to be different from the last one for sure. With the pegs. I might have two pegs straight up and down. So this thing spins on its stand. And I still want to make this like uh, some sort of a decorative vase. So therefore it will have a mouth. But it won't be quite as fish mouth as the other one. Because it's already hollowed out. So all I need to do is make my small hole in there and with the drum I'll go inside and follow the contour of the piece so it's wider inside. Nobody's going to feel this inside but even if they were they would be impressed with the finish both inside and out. It's time this comes off the lid so I can make the uh, end caps on this. So this usual method on a spur drive in between centers and start shaping it and sizing it. So this is fit number one, which is for this side, and I will profile it in place. So it will just require a little bit of profiling. I'll uh, resand this whole center disc, and uh, that one will be for this side. And you can see the inside is nice and flush. I don't know if you can see that or not, but nice and flush on the inside. It cannot go through this seat. I made this little seat here, mortise it down to seat this all the way through. So this one, the way it is right now, should be a good mate for this side. So, once I get them in, I'm not going to be able to pop them out that easily. So, I will take this one out, fit this one in, and see how it looks in there. And, again, a nice tight fit around that rim without any issue whatsoever. Once this is glued in, it will be like one piece. So instead of the traditional setting it up up to this little groove that's over here, which is the back of your thing, and because I got this, and I don't want to sit it just over here till it bottoms out on the outside, I'll put the whole piece in, nice and flat, and uh, tighten it up with the piece against the back shoulders
against the back shoulders of my blade, uh, my uh, chuck. So, of course, this is getting dusty, and uh, you can see that it's not quite as clean as it was a little while ago. But uh, this piece is nice in here. That's in there, nice and tight. I should be able to trim this down without any problem. But why take chances? I will still go with my life center in there as long as I can. Nice and tight in here. Pop it out. You can see what's here. Leave it aside. Reverse it with the same idea. Flat against the uh, chuck in the back over here. Now the fact that this is that really has no impact on the finished piece. It's just the way it sits up against the shoulders because it's not typical on how it's uh, sitting in place. Now, well, you know, you can wiggle it until you get it straight, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you're not making cuts on it, you'll still be fine. the face and uh, these pieces are still not glued in they're just in place and it's time to start working the stand now on the stand I was playing with design ideas and when if I was going to do it from this point out and have the piece sit or stand in a 40 degree angle roughly or if I want to make it straight up and down the difference is if I make it straight up and down and I have the mouth at 1 o'clock 1 30 position roughly if I spin it it will spin and that mouth will always be pretty much at the top side if I do it at an axis like this on an angle well I spin it that mouth will spin is around this axis so uh, even though it would change the location exactly where the mouth is but even if it didn't I was thinking that uh, putting it this way I could get the mouth pretty much close to the center point over here but 
as I spin it this mount could be on the bottom because it would spin on this rotation rather than this rotation so I think I'm gonna stick with this design where the axis will be straight up and down or just slightly off from axis where this mount will still maintain on the top I found appropriately let's get you to the lid a piece of ash and uh, the ash of course seeing that it's already here will be a complement to to this so I'm going to draw this up the same radius as the bolt now the center point is right here so I'm going to show you a different way of doing this that's roughly the center to be the actual size because it needs to have a little bit of room for it to for the piece to slide around in there so this will be the inside cut maybe it doesn't have to be quite as big as that I'll shrink that down a little bit okay that's better So I'm going to notch this, slide this, and then contour this. Oops. Contour this and the foot to uh, to its proper profile on here. Mount it up. The axis will be important on how I put this, but I will radius this down to die into nothing over here. And the way I'm going to do this. The way I'm going to notch this out is on my radial arm saw.
So I'm applying lacquer to the uh, stand and I've thinned it down with lacquer thinner. See if that will uh, help me out with uh, how thick it was uh, coming up last time. But uh, that already seems to be working a little bit better. Now a friend of mine also gave me some tips on uh, hanging it up from a wire and letting it drip and then whatever drips. In other words, applying it heavy and uh, whatever drips would be way down at the bottom then cut them off with a knife or sand them down. And that sounds like uh, also an interesting concept. And one should never be afraid to, to try different things and learn with it. The worst thing that one can do is, in my book, in my book, is know it all. If you know it all, it's almost a shame because you have no room to learn anything else. Me? Much to learn. I do have a saying. If I don't learn something new today, then today was a waste of day. Now this is getting tacky, and I should know better than to just leave it alone until it dries up, and uh, that way I can Give it a nice finish, rather than fighting it. Now I need to make a mount on this as well. I have the top and the bottom, but uh, it's a vase. Here it is, another version of the vase, the disc vase, on a rotating pedestal. I think it came out pretty good. I got the um, ash on the center, mahogany, ash arch 
mahogany base. The pegs are mahogany as well. So I think that the whole thing works out pretty well. The spacing around the disc and the, the design of the, uh, the whole piece, I think it's pretty good. I can't wait till I get editing on this and uh, share it with you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you very soon.